today's project is a perpetual calendar. Got to print it on multiple sheets, and uh, I think we've just made a mistake. And uh, I think we've got to lower the uh, minimum laser power because it's where it's changing directions. It is just over cooking it a little bit. So uh, yeah, we'll remember that in the future. I don't think it's going to make a big difference, but it's definitely um, definitely overcooking it on the turns. So uh, we'll get that lowered, perhaps down to five on the uh, the next thing. So we're just marking out the pattern, and then it's going to cut that out. Well, it's going to cut three windows just in the um, the top here for the days, months and uh, years or whatever, it, yeah, it's days, months and years I think, and, uh, and then it's going to cut the outline after it's done this, uh, this pattern, so yeah, that's today's plans. So there's part one, this is going to be the uh, base, and uh, I don't know why that's so wide, there are three different bases here, so I uh, might need to cut the smaller base out, not sure yet. Uh, so that is the front and then we've got the windows. on a stand, imagine they're like there, and then you've got the, uh, the rotatable discs behind there. Oh, that's come out too badly. There could be a bit of variation in the height here. Might just slow the speed down a fraction as well for the next ones. But that's not come out too badly. Right, so these are the three discs that will spin inside. Uh, so we've got the engraving bit first and then the cutting bit last. So if we click on a line that is a cutting line, that is uh, an engraving line, that is a cutting line. So that just fits in on the board we've got left, so we're not wasting too much. Um, the engraving bit, I have just popped the minimum power down to five. So, uh, yeah, one through five, 17.5, and uh, minimum five, and then cutting. I, oh, I was on 15 and then 45, but I've just upped that to 50, just to be sure. And uh, earlier on I just cut out a um, couple of patterns just for my reference. Uh, yeah, that bit was a mistake, but we've basically got uh, no tape and you can see the burning uh, with tape, but it's up a couple of two and a half percent. So we get a nice clear image without that sort of smoky burning around it. And then we've got the line here with tape. Yeah, so just so I can flip back and just see what's going on. And you know, you need perhaps another two and a half percent power if you're going to use tape over it, but it does stop that um, brown smearing. So you can see it very slightly there. That's no tape and that's with tape, but I've got to up the power to 20 for that one to be clearer, but uh, clean. Anyway, at the moment we're trying this with uh, no tape. And uh, yeah, we're going to uh, run that now. So you can see it printing away there. Date, month, day. I don't know how it works out which way it's going to print this. <laughs> Oh, 
I was going to cover this with tape just to uh, protect it from any smoke and then I thought well actually all you're going to be seeing is one of each in the windows so probably wouldn't have uh, noticed any smokiness in one window but we'll see this is only a test drum for uh, advertising you know we'll take photos of this for the shop that is then going to cut this out in rings hopefully We've got the power okay to get through crisply. It does seem to make a difference if the wood has been in this uh, cold, dampish workshop. Um, my settings for cutting through this back in the uh, autumn months were a lot lower than they are now. I'm just uh, guessing that it's the moisture content in the wood that's making a difference. Come back in a minute when that's hopefully cut that out. Okay, that seems uh, successful. Hopefully, that is all going to come off. To the bench. So yeah that is looking good. So you see the idea you know eventually each will appear like so and this will be on the stand but uh, yeah these rings I think are then cut out but uh, on another piece of paper so only the bit that shows will um, be cut off so you know next stage we'll be cutting off there and there so there'll be three of these I assume it'll be three it might be four actually we want what will we need? One that side, one there, one there, one there. So yeah, it looks like it'll be four things cut out. But I think that's going to look quite good. I don't know what we're going to coat it with. Or, yeah, I probably will need a spray of something. So anyway, that's uh, two stages of that done. And on to the next. Okay, so next stage is these are the cutouts that will support the dials and uh, this is another cutout this is the backing piece and these pieces will stick onto where it's shown so these will just be 
uh, engraved slightly and then the whole thing will be cut out as the backing board and then these bits are glued to it. So uh, yeah, let's get this marked and cut out. We're doing the engraving first and then the cutting second. So uh, this will be engraved, it will then be cut out and then all of these will be cut out. So that's engraved that and it's now just cutting it out. sections that will fit in that then the dials will turn in the gaps so yeah back in a minute when that's done I've got a sneaky feeling I printed out the wrong one of these because this is the main piece that everything is on and there should be a base tab there which is the three mil so I'll probably have to redo this otherwise this would be a wall mounting one rather than a stand mounted one so uh, yeah but let's cut that out uh, all perfectly I hope yeah there we go so we've got the three bits they will all go in here and be glued in place. So, yeah, a bit of gluing to be done next. Pretty good. Yeah, might need some weight on that to uh, get these properly stuck on once the glue is on there. Yeah, there we go. And then obviously the rings. sit inside like that. You'd think they'd be a tighter fit than that, wouldn't you? There you go, so you get the idea there, and that will just turn around. I guess it needs a little bit of movement just to get it right. It's not going to be perfect. But anyway, there you go, so that's the idea, except I've just printed out the wrong... I think I've printed out that wrong, because that is not going to support a 3mm base unless you... Uh, yeah, so you probably need to do that again, and the back needs to be done again. If I want to make that a stand version, otherwise that is a all-mountable version. There we go. So we're just redoing the stand up there, and the, uh, the main bit that holds together with the stand. Uh, for actually printed out in 3mm a minute ago and then realised that it's actually, you know, including the cut line, it was actually too much. So I've changed the thickness of that hole to, uh, it was 2.44, so I'm hoping to get a tighter fit. So that all looks good. Probably 
close to the fruit now. Yeah, that's going to be a quite tight fit in there. You could print out a few of those and stick them together, I guess, so that goes in a bit further and is a bit more substantial. So that is basically all of the parts. There. Came with three sizes of base. This is the smallest, which I've adjusted myself. Now that was the widest, which I obviously didn't judge. I thought that was 3mm. <laughs> So uh, yeah, there we go, we'll just make some modifications and carry on. Okay, so we've just taken all of the cut out pieces and uh, stuck them together. I've left it plain, um, it probably would have benefited from the tape being put over. You can just see a little bit of smoke marking on the wood, so yeah, definitely could have done that. I decided to cut the base out uh, in four pieces and I've glued those together and then I've just filed the hole to fit and uh, just glued that together. Again this could have done with sanding down but this is only for uh, photos this one so uh, there was little point in finishing it off. I could have sprayed painted the base or I could have put a gloss uh, finish on there you know anything like that. So um, yeah that's it. Um, I think it's quite damp out here and this wood is quite, well, not rough but it's when you try and turn these they stick a little bit. So uh, this is going to go into the house and uh, just get dried out. It's quite damp I think out here in the workshop. Uh, so we'll take that in, let it dry out and then hopefully these will be easier to turn. But you can certainly turn them, it's not a problem, they're just a little bit stiff. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, we know what we can charge for this sort of thing, bearing in mind the amount of time that's taken and uh, you know, you're talking two or three days to glue everything and let the glue dry, uh, but I think that's absolutely fine.